Welcome to our weekly Bible study. I welcome you, all of you, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We continue our study of the Word of God from the book of Revelation. We have been going through the book of Revelation, and I invite you to go through our previous uh, recordings or meditations that we have been going through. And currently we are in Revelation chapter 3, the last church, that is the church in Laodicea. I welcome you, open your heart for Jesus. I encourage you to have your physical Bible with you, though I'll also be projecting the main text that is on the blackboard. I welcome you in the name of Jesus. Have an open heart, and as we go through the word of God, may it enrich you in Jesus' name. So we continue our weekly Bible study of the book of Revelation. So to the message to the church, to the angel of the assembly of Laodicea, right? That is Revelation chapter 3 from verse 14. The Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of creation of God says these things. So our meditation again begins from acknowledging Jesus. We know that Jesus is the one who is he, is the one who is holy. Throughout our meditation from Revelation chapter 1, we were able to say to see that Jesus is the Amen, the Aleph and the Tav, that is the beginning and the end. And now, when the Bible says that uh, the words of Amen, that is also Amen is an agreement, but is also the name of God. He is the faithful one and is the true witness and is the ruler of all creation. He was there at the beginning. This is just a confirmation of what. John chapter 1 verse 1 says that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And also in Genesis, if you go to our study of Revelation chapter 1, we did have a detailed breakdown of the Aleph and the Tav, that is the Alpha and Omega, and how it connects to Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Uh, Proverbs uh, chapter 8, um, Proverbs chapter 8 verse 23 says, uh, the Bible says, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 23, it's about the virtue of wisdom. The Bible says that I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, before there was ever an earth. I repeat again, it says, I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, before there was ever an earth. That is a direct confirmation of our Lord Jesus Christ, his wisdom within him are the seven spirits of God, which is granted us permission to also be a partaker of the same spirit. So back to Revelation chapter 3, uh, verse 14, 
This just gives us a confirmation. You have to take your the word of God to your heart. If you, if we have sound mind, when we go through the word of God, we able to pray through scripture. Scriptural prayer releases the power of God. When we praise Jesus, being the amen, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning, we also understand that he himself is wisdom. And he was there even before the earth was formed. Verse 15, the Bible says, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were cold or hot. Uh, so then, verse 16, so then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will split you out of my mouth. Um, I will split you out of my mouth. So what does verse 15 and 16 uh, teach us from the word of God? This is, I always say that scripture interprets itself with scripture. And I'm sharing a lot of scripture so that we can be able to meditate and see God is speaking, is consistent in his word. He's consistent in what he's saying to us. That in life, we are supposed to always have a stand. Let us not be cold nor hot. Let our yes be yes and our no be no. This is well uh, prescribed in Matthew chapter 5 verse 37. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5 verse 37. Matthew chapter 5 verse 37. Matthew chapter 5 verse 37 i will start from verse 33 uh, it's about it's a teaching about oath making an oath the bible says again you have heard that it was said by the ancients you shall not swear falsely but shall fulfill your oaths to the lord verse 34 but i say to you do not swear at all neither by heaven for it's god's throne 35 nor by the earth for it is his footstool, not by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Verse 36, nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. Verse 37 is my key text that we relate with what Revelation is saying. But let your yes mean yes and no mean no, for whatever is more than this comes from the evil one. So this is a key lesson to me that if you are seeking God for something or you are pursuing God for something, do not move if you don't have clarity. But when you have clarity, please let your yes be yes. Don't go and then you say, oh, do I do this or do this? The Holy Spirit speaks in clarity. Do not live your life with being a double-minded person so that whatever you stand for, move in it because God does, does not like people who are lukewarm. That is what Revelation is telling us. James chapter 1 verse 8 also gives us a further relation to this. James chapter 1 verse 8. Let's go to James chapter 1 verse 8. James chapter 1 verse 8. The Bible says, Likewise, Uh, James chapter 1, verse 8. Just give me a minute. Yeah. James chapter 1, verse 8. Sorry, I was in another book. Um, yes, the Bible says, A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways ways a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways so this confirms to you that we are supposed to seek god and when god gives us a wisdom or a direction in a particular manner we are supposed to pursue it so that your yes is yes and your no is no back to revelation chapter 3 verse 17 the bible says uh, so just an emphasis on verse 16 jesus is warning us that if we are double-minded he will spit us out of his mouth. So this is a warning to all of us that if, if we are double-minded in any way, we are inviting judgment of Jesus spitting us out of his mouth. Verse 17, For you say, I am rich and have stored up goods and have need of nothing, yet you do not realize that you are wretched, 
miserable and poor, blind and naked. Uh, this reminds me of a parable. Um, you can see first in the context of what verse 17 is telling us. How Jesus sees things is not the way we see. You could see yourself in the things of this world, that you have all that it takes. Yet in God, you do not have what it takes. Uh, that is what Revelation chapter 3, verse 17 is telling us, that for you say, I am rich and have stored up goods and need of nothing, yet you do not realize that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Let us look at Hosea chapter 8, verse 12, to give us a further understanding. Hosea chapter 8, uh, verse 12. Hosea chapter 8, verse 12. Hosea chapter 8, verse 12. Yeah, Hosea chapter 8, verse 12. The Bible says, I have written for him the great things of my law, but they were regardless as a strange thing. They were regarded as a strange thing. So this is a, a, a direct confirmation of what uh, God is telling us also in Revelation chapter 3, verse 17, that God has written to us what we should follow. But, at some, but in our own ways, we may think that we have everything and we do not need anything from God. And yet the moment we do that, we deceive, uh, we deceive ourselves in that. Look at Hosea chapter 12, verse 8. Hosea chapter 12, verse 8. Hosea chapter 12, verse 8. The Bible says, Ephraim said, Yet I am rich. I have found wealth for myself. In all my labors, they shall find no offense in me. That will be sin. So this was also talking about the history of rebellion in Hosea chapter 12. It was talking of how uh, people were rebellious against God. So we may think we have to know where are we putting our treasures? That is what Revelation chapter 3 verse 17 is challenging you and me. That you may think you are putting your treasures in heaven or you could think that in the context of the earth, you have everything that it takes. But yet in the eyes of God, you, have, you are naked and you think that you have everything, yet you actually lack. This parable in Luke chapter 12, verse 16 to 21. Uh, Luke chapter 12. Let's go to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, verse 16 to 21. Luke chapter 12. Uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 16 to 21. So, but it's the parable of uh, the rich fool. So the Bible says from verse 16, and he told a parable to them saying, the land of a rich man produced plentifully. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no room to store my crops. Verse 18. Then he said, this I will do. I will pull down my barns and build greater ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take rest, eat, drink, and be merry. Verse 20, but God said to him, You fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? Verse 21, so is he who stores up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. That is an exact parable that answers what Revelation chapter 3 verse 17 says. And there is something I forgot to mention earlier that I will share at this moment. Uh, this 
message is to the message of the church of Laodicea. Laodicea, if you check the word Laodicea in Greek, Laodicea means justice for the people. It means justice for the people. That is like uh, the meaning of Laodicea uh, in Greek. So it means it's more of a definition of the word democracy. Democracy. So I want you to understand that why is God warning the church of Laodicea? Because this is a church that believed in democracy rather than democracy of people, rather than the democracy of God. Um, we see this a lot in the Old Testament. In a number of times where the children of Israel would try to untwist God through serving their own idols and thinking in their own thoughts that what they are doing, that God will kind of like, they will kind of like um, twist God to suit into their own theology. And this will end up them suffering and suffering and suffering until when they heed to God's commandment uh, through repentance and humble and a contrite heart. That is when God will be able to come through. This is a message that we see happening in the world currently. We see many countries, speaking of democracy, most countries have an election system that is run, is run through democracy. So the key question that I'm challenging all of you, including myself, what if what you people be, believe to be democracy is against God's word? And that's the basis to the, of the message to the church of Laodicea, meaning the context of Laodicea, just like we saw in, in the church in Ephesus when we started sharing that we saw what Ephesus believed in when Paul was there. So Laodicea was a church that believed in democracy, meaning it is more of the people rather than God. So God is warning them a few things. One, being cold and hot, meaning they, they are neither here, neither there. And I've shared this earlier, that your yes has to be yes in life, and your no to be no. Otherwise, God will spit you out of his mouth. That is a direct warning from his word. And then another thing, we are seeing a connection even in Ephraim during the time of Hosea that they thought in themselves, in their rebellion, that they were rich and they had a lot, yet they did not have. We're also seeing this as a confirmation through this parable of this man who was a rich or a fool, rich fool person that he stored up more goods to satisfy his body, like his flesh. And God is saying that in this night, his flesh will be demanded from him. And what will he say from it? Is it uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Let's check in Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. I said I'll give many verses because Bible interprets itself. So we can be able just to connect and see how what God is saying. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. Yes, uh, it's it's about the vanity of pleasure. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. The Bible says, uh, I even bought male and female slaves. Even some were born to me in my house. I also had great possessions of herds and of flocks, more than any who had been in Jerusalem before me. I also gathered for myself, that is verse 8, I also gathered for myself silver and gold and treasures of kings and provinces. I obtained singers, both men and women, and the delights of the sons of men and many concubines. So I became, verse 9, so I became great, and surpassed anyone who had been in Jerusalem before me. All the while, why all the while my wisdom remained with, with me. Verse 10. And everything that was that my eyes wanted, I did not refuse them. And I did not withhold my heart from any selfish pleasure. Uh, I'll read verse 11. I'll skip to read verse 11. Then I turned to all the work that my hands had designed and all the labor that I had toiled to make and notice all it was vanity and chasing the wind and there was no benefit under the sun. 
So just to recap, earlier, remember we had studied the book of Ecclesiastes, and I will encourage you to go back to our readings to go and see what he's saying. But more so just to give the context of which what the God, the word of God is saying. That remember Solomon had all this. He's the main writer of Ecclesiastes. And this is a confirmation on what we are seeing in Revelation chapter 3, verse 17. He ended up understanding that wisdom that comes from the word of God has advantage over foolishness. So while all these things are relevant, all these things are good in life, but if you sanctify the things in the world, the material things that we have, when we sanctify them to be the main thing that we want, it all becomes vanity. And it's like we are chasing a wind that is blowing away. That is what Revelation chapter 3 verse 17 is warning us. So back to Revelation, uh, I'll read from verse 18, chapter 3 verse 18. Jesus is now telling us, uh, I counsel you. Now remember this message is from Jesus to us. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be dressed that the shame of your nakedness may not appear and anoint your eyes with eyesal that you may see. Verse 19, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Listen, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone has, that is verse 20, if anyone has, Has, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him and he with me. Verse 21. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat with my father on his throne. Verse 22. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the assemblies. So I want to take you back to the context of verse 18 that we may meditate. Jesus is giving us an interesting portion. He's counseling us to buy from him. I want you to meditate this. I said this is a Bible study. We are not uh, studying like the Pharisees. Think and think through what we are saying. Jesus is challenging you to buy from him. In the context of the natural world, you can never buy anything if you don't have a form of exchange, whether it's through butter trade or through money. If you go and procure like groceries, you give out money and you are given groceries. In the ancient days, when you do butter trade, you will give out something in exchange of something. So the key question that I want to challenge you and myself, what should we have for we to be able to buy from Jesus? Because he's not giving it free. Remember, you cannot buy something that costs you nothing. King David, when he wanted to procure a land for the house of God, he went to Aranuna, that is in the book of Samuel, and he had to have something that would cost him. Abraham in Genesis, I think 22, when Sarah died and he wanted to get land in Horeb to bury Sarah, he had to procure land. He didn't, he didn't get land for free. He had to procure it at around... 400 shekels. So there are three things listed here that I want you to check. One, Jesus is telling you to buy gold refined by fire. That is number one. Mark it on your Bible. Two, why you may procure from him gold refined by fire that you may be rich. Two, he's telling you to have white garments that you may be dressed, that the shame of your nakedness may not appear. And three, Jesus is telling you to anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may be able to see. Watch this. No one is anointing you. It is you to anoint yourself. So what are these three things that Jesus is speaking to you and me in the now that we should take into our heart? I want to take you to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Have the two uh, pages concurrently as we meditate through. Matthew chapter 25. 
Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Uh, Matthew chapter 25 is, is an interesting chapter because remember Matthew chapter 24 talks about the end times. And I believe even as you watch this recording, we can all attest in our hearts that we are living in the perilous times, meaning in the end times. So because if you look at Matthew chapter 24, it talks about the destruction of the temple and the coming of the Son of Man. Now Matthew chapter 25 has three parables. Three parables. There's the parable of the ten virgins. There's the parable of the talents. And now there is also the one which talks about the judgment that is coming among the nations. So what will this what really matters so that we can connect with the three things that is contained in revelation chapter 3 verse 18 now as i said there are three things there is gold tried in the fire there is white arrangement and there is eye salve so watch this that gold tried in the fire represents the parable of the ten virgins gold trying tried i repeat again gold tried in the fire represent the parable of the ten virgins i will not read this whole parable for the sake of time but i really request you to if you can't remember it you can be able to skim or go through it so this parable talks about wise and foolish virgins so they were all waiting for the bridegroom to return at the midnight hour the whole had lit their lamps. Listen to very careful some of these key points that I'm saying. The all were waiting for the bridegroom. Number two, the all had lit their lamps. But half of them did not bring up a double portion of oil. So only half were ready and only half were prepared. So only the wise virgins had enough oil for their lamps to stay lit. And all they seemed to start out all right, but only the wise virgins overcome. So what do you think this is telling you? The, the, the oil represents your worship in the Holy Spirit. Your worship in the Holy Spirit. Our true worship in God by the Holy Spirit. We are worshiping beings. And when we worship God, in spirit and truth, by the Holy Spirit, by the fire of the Holy Spirit, being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Wherever you worship, that is the kind of oil that you are putting in in your lamp. So if you are not lit with the fire of the Holy Spirit, you are offering strange fire. You are offering strange fire. We know there's this verse uh, that was it in the Old Testament? Let me just get you the verse. Uh, must be in Exodus, but I, I don't want to really uh, dwell that. It, it's in Exodus and also in Leviticus, specifically verse 10, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says that Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abiu, took their censers and put fire in them and added incense. Remember, incense is a form of intercession when you worship and intercede. And the Bible says they offered strange fire or they offered an authorized fire before the Lord, contrary to his command. So fire came out of the presence of the Lord and consumed them, and they died before the Lord. This is Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. So look at it this way. While Aaron's sons died in the natural immediately. How many of us are already dying in the spiritual immediately by offering strange fires before the Lord? And there is something that I'll also share about this parable. That this parable also talks about tribulation and rapture. I'll talk about it later as we continue studying the book of Revelation. I'm giving one understanding of it. And the first understanding of it is that this parable represents gold refined in fire. It means you have to ensure your worship 
is in spirit and in truth, and your worship is of the Holy Spirit. And this, remember, cannot happen without you developing a relationship with Jesus, without you paying a price for Jesus. We know for gold to be refined, it has to be tested through fire and through life situations. Then in the hour that we are living, if we don't exercise patience, if we don't pay a price for Jesus, we might be left out after rapture. Rapture will happen first and then tribulation. So rapture will happen first, then tribulation. So if you make it and go with Jesus to rapture, you'll be part of the wise virgins. So the question that I want to ask, is everything lost for the foolish virgins? The answer is no. Why? It's because if you are left after rapture, it means you will have to remain and go through tribulation. And tribulation will be a real experience that you will have to prove your real loyalty to Jesus Christ, where Satan will be given full mandate of a man. And just like we'll go through the Bible as we continue uh, going through it, Jesus himself said, what is coming is worse than what we have ever seen with our naked eyes. So if you are having small sufferings in this current dispensation and you are complaining, how much more will you be able to hold when you are left after rapture? It means that those who will be left after rapture, you will have a real case to prove your loyalty for Christ. Which will you manage? The question I'll ask all of us. Will you manage if the Holy Spirit is gone? So it's an encouragement that let us not be like the foolish virgins. Take every day. There is a famous rabbi uh, proverb that says, uh, ensure you repent one day before your last day on earth. So the students asked the rabbi, when will I know my last day? And the rabbi says, the fact that you do not know your last day, then treat every day as if it is your last day. Remember that Jesus is saying it is you to purchase from him. It is not Jesus to give you. So a purchase, this is a transaction. Pay a price for an exchange of something. So gold refined in fire represents the parable of the, of the ten virgins. The wise and the foolish virgins. Then the next thing that God is saying, we have to put on a white red raiment. What is a white raiment? What is a white raiment? So the white raiment represents living a, a life that is not stained in sin. Living a life that is not stained in sin. Being Christ conscious. Being Christ conscious rather than being sin conscious. Back in Exodus, remember before they would partake the Passover, they were told to ensure they wash their garments, to ensure that their garments are not stained. So what does that mean to you and me spiritually? That we have to ensure not to wash our physical garments, but to ensure that our hearts is in line with Jesus at all times. Our hearts is in line with Jesus at all times. So when our heart is, in, is with Jesus at all times, be conscious of Christ, praying constantly in your heart. Praying constantly in your heart because this by this you'll be able to put on a white raiment. Then the third one is anointing yourself with eye salve. You anoint yourself with eye salve. So I told you these parables are the same parables that are in Matthew chapter 25. So how do you anoint yourself with eye salve? So anointing yourself with eye salve represents this parable. Uh, sorry, before I go anointing yourself with eye salve, putting on a white treatment represents the parable of the talents in Matthew 25. 
put, represents the parable of the talents. And in this parable of the talents, I'll still give you a story about it because of time. But I encourage you, if you get time, ensure you go and read it. So what happened in this parable of this talent? One, the master gave out five talents. That is in Matthew chapter 25. So the one who received five talents, he traded with them and made five more talents. The one who had received two talents gained two. But the one who had received one, he dug it and hid it in the master's and hid the master's money. And when the master came back, the one for the five talents was told, was told, well done, you good and faithful servant. That is verse 21. You have been faithful of a few things and I'll make you ruler of many things. Enjoy, enter the joy of your master. Verse 22. He who had two talents also came and said, Master, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I've gained two more talents besides them. Verse 23, the master told him, well done, you good and faithful servant. You have been faithful of a few things and I'll make you ruler of many things. Enjoy, enter the joy of your master. Verse 24, then the one who had received one talent said, I knew that you are a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not win on. Verse 25, so I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what it is what is yours look at how the master rebuked this person he said you wicked and slothful servant you knew that i reap where i have not sown and gather where i have not winnowed verse 27 then you ought to have given my money to the bankers at my coming i should have received what is my own with interest i want you to see the business nature of our lord jesus christ Jesus has also a business mind. And I say this represents putting on a white arrangement. I want you to imagine this. Both the three people who are given talents, none of them lost it. Assuming you go for a journey and you give people your money to keep it for you. Even the one of one talent did not lose the money. But why do you think the master rebuked him? Because Jesus is looking for two th things in our lives. Is looking at one, faithfulness, and two, multiplication. Faithfulness and multiplication. All these must go together. You cannot be faithful and fail to be a multiplier. Because in the natural sense, we can say even the one who had one talent was not a thief. He returned back the money. But we are seeing the master rebuke him. So it tells you in everything that you do, one, be Christ conscious. When you put on a white treatment, it means you are Christ conscious. Two, ensure you are faithful in whatever gifting that God has given to you. And ensure, number three, you are a multiplier through the action of giving and receiving. Giving and receiving. Whatever Jesus has placed upon us will come and give an account. And Jesus will be checking. Were we Christ conscious through love? Were we faithful on what he gave us? And were we multipliers? And the third one, Jesus is saying, put, anoint yourself with Isal. Jesus is not anointing you. He said, you anoint yourself. That is what Revelation chapter 3 verse 18 says. Anoint yourself with Isal. Why? So that you may see. This is the judgment on nations. I said all these three things are the three parables in, parables in Matthew chapter 25. And what what is contained in um, uh, what is contained in the judgment uh, in the third parable in Matthew chapter twenty five that we can connect to uh, the Bible says this in uh, from Matthew chapter twenty five verse twenty twenty from verse thirty one the Bible says then the Son of Man comes in his glory and all his holy holy angels are with him then he will sit. On the throne of his glory. Uh, before him will be gathered all nations, and he will separate them from one another as a shepherd separates his sheep from the goats. Verse 33. He will set the sheep at his right hand, but the goats will go to the left. Then, verse 34, the Bible says, Then the king will say to those at his right hand, 
Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you since the foundations of the world. For look at verse 35 very keenly. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Verse 36, I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you clothed me. Verse 37, then the Russians will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Verse 39, and when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? Listen to verse 40, the answer. Then the king will answer, truly, I say to you, as you have done it for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you've done it for me. Verse 41, then he will say to those at the left, depart from me, you cast into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his sons. So how do I connect this to you anointing yourself with I salve? This is what I say. Someone who has eye salve is like you have scales in your eyes. At times when we sleep in the morning, you have to like rub your eyes and remove some scales off your eyes. Why do you do that? So that you may be able to see clearly. So basically, how do we connect this to the parable that Jesus is saying? It means basically recognize Jesus when he appears to you in disguise. That's what I mean. Recognize Jesus when he appears to you in disguise. Why? Jesus could appear to you through the, a person in need. Could be your brother, your sister, your friend, your acquaintances, your enemy. But if you don't see Jesus in that situation, if you don't see Jesus in that person, then you will skip that person remember the parable or the story of the good samaritan i will not go into it so basically jesus is telling you anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see what am i saying do not fail to recognize jesus when he appears when the trumpet is sounded do not be among the people who will fail to recognize him like the foolish virgins so these three parables, the parable of the virgins is gold refined in fire. How? You ensure your worship is that of the Holy Spirit. The next one is put on your white, wear white clothes or white raiment that you may not be naked. What is that? That is the parable of the talents. Ensure one, you are Christ conscious. Two, ensure you are faithful in whatever you do. And three, you are a multiplier. That's the parable of the talents. Then put on anoint. And remember, all this is for you to do it. It's not Jesus to do it for you. I like saying you have to push yourself. Why? Jesus is saying you buy from him. He's not buying from you. You buy from him. Meaning pay the price. So anoint yourself with Isaac. This is judgment to the nations. Why? He is put it clearly in verse, in, in verse 40. That is uh, Matthew chapter 25, verse 40. Truly I say to you, as you've done it for one of this list of these brothers of mine, then you've done it for me. It tells you, pray. Let us all pray that we may not bypass Jesus in one way or another, through a situation that he wants us to intervene and we were like people who did not know him. This is very clearly. Remember, Jesus is saying he will separate people, put people on the right hand and put, put people on the left hand. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 2, as I finish. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 2. The Bible says, The heart of the wise inclines to the right, but the heart of the fool inclines to the left. I repeat, Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse, Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, 
verse 2. The Bible says, The heart of the wise inclines to the right, but the height of the, the heart of the fool inclines to the left. Why do you think the Bible talks about left and right? Remember, the Bible says we are all seated and raised in G with Jesus. On which side? On the right hand side. So the, the spiritual governmental place of authority, where we pray from, where we are with Jesus, is at the right hand side. So first, it speaks of a spiritual position or place of authority where we are. The other thing that it tells you, these are direct confirmation on Matthew chapter 25, verse 33. It says, he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the gods to the left. John 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice and they know it and they know me. This is also a confirmation. Ecclesiastes, no, uh, Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. The Bible again confirms. Then he will say to those of the left hand, depart from me, you cast into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So my plea to you is that one, ensure your life is in Christ. Ensure you give your life in Christ. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, you already your spirit is seated with him at the right hand side. And that's a confirmation on Revelation chapter 3 verse 21. You can see it's written, to the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit on with me on my throne. So we already know the governmental place where we shall sit with Jesus Christ. And, and, and also God says, if, you, if we overcome, he's knocking at the door. And if we hear his voice and open the door, he will come in and dine with us and we will be with him. John chapter 5, John chapter 5, verse 17 to 18. John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verse 17 to 18. John chapter 5, verse 17 to 18. The Bible says, Yeshua answered them, My father is still working. My father is working still and I'm working. So the Jews sought even more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, making himself equal to God. That is just a confirmation that God will come and dine with you and me. God will come and dine with you and me. So that is what I have for you, for us to meditate on. I encourage you, go through what we have shared. I've shared a few things to tell you that the message to the church of Laodicea is a warning to all of us to ensure that whatever we agree in our homes, in our nations, the, what we call democracy is our democracy in line with God's word. Is our democracy in line with God's word? I said Laodicea means justice or democracy for the people. Two, we should remember that we should ensure our yes is yes and our no is no. The Bible, Jesus hates someone who is double-minded. James chapter 1 verse 8. Matthew chapter 5, verse 37, I shared earlier. God says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Then as we store up our goods, we should ensure that our works, our works accompany us in heaven and not here on earth. Whatever you are storing, whatever physical resources God has given us, they are good. But let us not sanctify them to be the real thing, like what the rich man did. I shared that parable. Then the other thing I've said from verse 18, that Jesus wants you to purchase three things. Gold refined in fire is the parable of the ten virgins. White treatment is the parable of the talents. And putting on an isal is judgment to the nations. These are the three parables that are contained there and if we conquer we are will be granted a governmental place to sit with jesus and if you give your life to jesus christ 
already you make your prayers from the heavenly places where we are seated in Christ at the right hand side of the Father. May the God may the Lord God bless you with these words and let us pray. Our heavenly Father in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Father, our King, hear our voice. Avino Malkenu Shema Kolenu. I pray, Lord God Almighty, to help us during these times, O oh God Almighty. I place everyone under the hearing of my voice under the blood of Jesus. I pray, Father, that people may come to the knowledge of Jesus. They may come to you, God Almighty, as you are the faithful one, the beginning and the end, the true and the amen, the faithful witness. I pray, Lord Jesus, to you that you forgive us while we have placed our hope in the treasures that we have. And by that, Lord God Almighty, we are inviting judgment upon ourselves. Forgive us where our democracy is guided by our own legal laws and not in line with your word, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you help us to put on our worship in the Holy Spirit. I pray that you help us to be baptized and be filled with the Holy Spirit, O oh God Almighty, that we may be, we may purchase from you gold refined in fire. I pray, I pray, God Almighty, that you help us, God Almighty, that we may put on a white treatment to ensure that we are Christ conscious. Help us to be faithful and multiply us in whatever we do, God Almighty, and help us to anoint our eyes with eye salve, that we may recognize you, Jesus, when you appear in disguise. I pray, Jesus, that you help us, God Almighty, to overcome. Help us to overcome, Lord Jesus, that we may bring glory and honor unto you. I pray even for the upcoming harvest of the church, that they may come to know you, God Almighty. They may come to realize your power in spirit and in truth. I pray, Jesus, that let your mercy and your favor manifest all in all of us. In Jesus' name, I pray and believe. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you so much. And let's meet in our next Bible study. Be blessed and God bless you.